Hey everyone, it's Average Gatsby, and welcome to my Dragon Age guide to the Kakari Wilds. Um, this is going to give you a overview of how I plan on doing this guide, um, but this is also sort of testing the waters for me, seeing if this is the kind of guide that you want to see, or if you want to see something that's more solely on gameplay, um, because I can do either or. This is going to kind of be a walkthrough guide. I'm going to show you basically where to pick up all of the items, whatnot, chests, and uh, the quests here. But at the same time, I'm also going to be talking pretty extensively about the gameplay, my setup, my tactics for each of the fights. Um, so I can do either one. I can do this way and give you a walkthrough, or I can leave all this stuff out and I can just focus on the fighting and cutting out completely, you know, walking to and fro places and things of that nature. Um, I am going to be doing a lot of cuts in this video whenever I stand around trying to regen health. I'll be cutting that. I'll be cutting whenever I loot all my dead enemies at the end of a fight. Um, just beat things up. But I can cut even more than that if that's what you want to see. But if you want to see a walkthrough, I'm totally fine with doing that. Um, so let me talk about this party setup first of all. Um, you're kind of a little bit overloaded on melee to start off with, so I recommend putting Davith on basically the role of an archer of a ranged unit. Um, he's a little bit hard to manage when he gets out of that role. Uh, he tends, you know, he's strongest when he's doing his, uh, you know, attacking from the rear, but he tends to get in trouble quite a bit. Um, I just find this whole group because we're so melee heavy, is a lot easier to manage if you set at least one of them to do range. Now, if you're comfortable with it, you can actually have um, the, I can't remember his name right now, the Knight of Redcliffe. Um, oh, Sir Jory. There we go. Sir Jory be a archer as well. Um, I chose not to do that. I, you know, I like his two-handed moves, so I'm going to keep him in there, but basically you can see how this works. And Weirdly, I got in a little bit of trouble with these wolves right here in the beginning. Um, not in any sort of health way. I'm not going to have to use a health potus or anything like that, but I you know, I noticed that they kind of surrounded me, and I took a lot of hits to the rear that uh, I wasn't really comfortable with. So that usually doesn't happen. But basically, the, the main thing I recommend with these... Um, with this setup is going as much as you can, uh, letting the enemy come to you is really, I can't really stress that enough. And right here, um, now I can talk about my tactics. I kind of messed up before, and so now I'm changing it. Um, you want to set Davs to ranged and l make him use uh, the pinning shot. Um, my tactics, I didn't really think these out super well. I, I just sort of put them down. I knew I wasn't going to have this party these party members for very long, and so I just changed it up to whatever was most useful, but, um, you know, different settings would have been more helpful with these units, but this section I didn't really feel was challenging enough that I needed to put a whole lot of effort into it, and I do micromanage my units a little bit, so I wasn't uh, terribly worried about that. Um, I switch his mighty... Uh, blow with pommel strike simply because both he and uh, my character Aiden are going to have um, indomitable on the entire time and so there's no way that he's going to have enough uh, stamina points to really be using mighty blow and anyway he should be using uh, sunder arms instead um, we happen upon this guy who's uh I like how he's hes pretty much on the verge of death. They call him Dying Soldier. Just a couple band-aids, he can get back up on his feet and make it back to camp just fine. And Sir Jory chickens out right here, but you, I just say, hey, I like killing, so we keep moving. But, you know, not really making a good impression on, uh, on the Knights of Redcliffe right here, Jory, when you want to go home from the second I meet you. Well, we'll see what happens to you. Anyway, uh, back to the squad, or I'm sorry, the party, the party, not the squad. <laughs> um, uh, one thing 
you know, once again, I'm going to be uh, trying my best to basically trick the enemy into charging me, and I want to keep them... If you can, uh, it's good to try to keep your units out of these archers' range. Um, I know it's possible. I did, I did it other times, but I didn't really think it was necessary right here. When I see he's on the verge of death, I decide, you know, just to go charge uh, these genlocks. Now, uh, Indomitable is really nice to have when you're fighting genlocks because genlocks love to use the move uh, below the belt, which you will see them use over and over again on both me, on uh, my player character, and on Jory, uh, to no effect at all. Which is really nice, you know, just preventing uh, that stun effect. And I did have to use a couple health potuses here, but nothing too major. Um, I end up getting through all the Kakari Wilds with most of my health potuses, lesser health potuses intact, and uh, I think I used three or four total. And then I only had Davith fall during the very last fight, but that's basically because someone walked in and we were having a conversation and I, I wasn't even paying attention. That's pretty much how over it was at that point. Um, so, you know, I looted those enemies, I went back down and looted them, and then come over here and pick up the wildflowers. Um, if you have the quest from the Kennel Master, if you are a different class at this point, um, you probably have already gotten it, but you can still complete the quest, even if you already have your dog, because you're a human noble, by um, just walking over to any of those various flowers laying around. I just found that those were the closest, and so I decided to pick those up. Um, I like to go... I'm going to go to the far... Uh, east of the map first, and that's because I'm, you know, I I don't want to do very much backtracking, and I feel like this route leaves uh, pretty min minimal backtracking. So once again, you see I'm waiting and uh, waiting for these hurlocks to charge down here. Um, one thing you want to be careful of is that I have both Alistair, um, Jory, and uh, myself set to automatically hit the uh, nearest enemy with their knockdown ability. Mine, would, mine and Jory's would be Pommel Strike. Uh, Alistair's would be Shield Bash. Um, you want to be careful that you... I want to do a little bit of micromanaging at the beginning of a fight and make sure that those don't overlap. Or uh, have your own character not use their Pommel Strike and just go with Sunder Arms. Um, let me talk about Sunder Arms real quick. Sunder Arms is a really good ability to use in the beginning of the game. I actually like using it more than Mighty Blow um, for a couple of reasons. One is that Sunder Arms, first of all, has that effect of making an enemy's attack weaker. But secondly, it's actually a double hit move. Um, it doesn't say it on the tooltip, but it counts as two hits. Um, you, sing, you swing your sword around your head twice and you're able to score two hits for basically the price of one, um, which I, you know, think is really valuable. Um, now I showed the looting up there because sometimes these gen locks appear up there. You can kind of hear them growling in the background when that happens. But you know, uh, right there, you see Sunder Arms working for the the dual hit, and then I chop his head off. Awesome. And then we've got one more to finish up here. Um, so the video's uh, drawn to a close right here. Um, start next time, I'll be uh, pilfering the missionary and uh, seeing what loot he's got for us. Anyway, I'm Average Gatsby, and uh, have a good day.